Please help me welcome our next gubernatorial candidate, Mr. John Cox. Thank you for making the time. Thank you for having me. Thanks again. Uh, we're just going to jump right into it. Um, Great. We'd like to just start out by understanding, uh, get a sense of what you see as the solution to California's housing crisis, and what specifically um, during your first year would you do to address the problem? Well, I'm, uh, I'm actually in the housing business. Uh, I started buying apartments in uh, the Midwest uh, when I was in my uh, late 20s. and. Right now, I can build apartments for $80,000 a door in Indiana. And I built some wonderful apartments, and the average rents are seven, dollars $800 a month for a two-bedroom apartment. Uh, contrast that with California, where the cost to build is $500,000 in San Diego, $700,000 in San Francisco, $300,000 in Fresno. The problem, obviously, the cost of land. We've got a, a lot of demand for land here. but. The other part of the problem is regulation, taxes, uh, the litigation, the delay. I called for the uh, replacement of CEQA, uh, the California Environmental Quality Act, which I believe has been used by trial lawyers to drive up the cost of housing, to you know, have developers sue each other to keep uh, developments from being built. I mean, that's competition. Uh, uh, a lot of uh, labor unions have gotten into the act to threaten lawsuits in order to get better wage demands. Uh, I don't think the law was intended for that. Uh, we've got to break down the barriers to more supply. I'm a businessman. I laugh when I hear politicians say that we're going to subsidize a few thousand uh, homes. I mean, we need 300,000 homes in California for the next 10 years. I mean, we're three million under where we should be in this state. Uh, and if you look at housing costs, I'm, I'm sure you've been talking about it, this is the major component in any household budget. There are, there are families that are paying 40, 50% of their income in housing. And you know what? That ends up being the major cost in every business budget and every governmental budget because we have to pay our people more in order to get you know, them to come here and, and, and work. Uh, if we can bring down the cost of housing, we'll make California businesses more competitive, we'll make government more lean, which means we won't need to tax as much. Uh, I look at uh, a, a boom in housing as a, uh, a silver bullet, as, a, uh, as a, a virtuous circle upwards for this state. It create jobs, create economic growth, and, uh, and lower the cost of government and business. Uh, housing, to me, is the singular issue. And let me just say this, too, Angela. The politicians who are running for governor aren't going to do a thing about it. They're going to talk about it. But at the end of the day, the environmental lobbyists, the trial lawyers, the big businesses, the big unions, they control Sacramento. And they won't tell you that. But they all raise money from these groups in order to fund their campaigns. I am talking about real reform that will get the money out of politics, that will get the corruption out of politics, that will bring the people back into the system, and we can then really get regulations reduced, streamlined, taxes reduced, the budget reduced, and we'll make California competitive again. I think uh, officials have been um, promising for decades to streamline the process. Sure. Um, what, I haven't gotten it done. What, how, would, how would you do that differently? How could you deliver on that promise? You've got to change the dynamics in the state legislature. Uh, people should look at something I'm talking about called the neighborhood legislature, which makes the districts so small you don't need money to run it didn't for office. Qualify, and, 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 you know, that's the only way to get money and influence peddling out of our politics. Uh, you know, I grew up in Chicago. I saw corruption and influence peddling, but I tell you what, it pales next to what happens in this city. Uh, we need to make sure that we get good policy for policy's sake. I mean, look at what they did the last term with the uh, affordable housing subsidies. Uh, they, they enacted these subsidies, and then they handed out a prevailing wage rule that drove up the cost at the same time. I think you, call, call, you called it a... 
You called it a cruel joke and uh, would result in poor outcomes. Absolutely. And you know, then they drive up the cost of housing with all the regulations, all the delay, all the lawsuits, and then people have to move hours away from their job and then spend their time in traffic. Oh, and by the way, then they raise the gasoline tax so that you get to pay more for the privilege of sitting in traffic. You know, I'm the leader of the effort to get rid of the gas tax, and, and that's a very regressive tax. It's just like housing. Housing is the largest cost in anybody's household, and if we don't attack it, businesses are gonna continue to move out of this state. Already, Silicon Valley is expanding in Arizona and Nevada. They're not building new plants in California. I mean, Apple is putting its executives in, in Silicon Valley because their executives want to live there and they're, you know, people in the offices. But, but they're building new phones and building new facilities in Texas and Austin and, and Scottsdale. Uh, Intel is the same story. We are going to see California continue to hollow out if we don't do something about housing. It is really and truly the number one issue. Uh, speaking of hollowing out, though, uh, there's been numerous studies and reports, re most recently from the State Legislative Analyst Office, that found um, a, an exodus from California, uh, middle-class people, low-income people. And there's an argument, I think, shared by many people in this room that in order to address the plight of the people, you know, the teachers, the firefighters, the working class people who have increasingly been able to afford living here, that you really have to do something to help subsidize construction to address this crisis. Well, I'm, I'm a Jack Kemp Republican. I believe in incentivizing the private sector. Ladies and gentlemen... Trickle the, down, right? No, not trickle down, build up. The, the, the point here is that the private sector is the only way we're going to build enough housing to truly, truly make a difference. And, you know, Jack Kemp talked about enterprise zones where you, where you make regulations streamlined and you provide other avenues to, you know, incentivize the private sector. Uh, you know, listen, uh, tax credits, uh, those, those, it, those things certainly have a place, I think. Uh, but I'd like to see streamlined regulations. I'd like to see incentives that would allow more density. I mean, I gotta tell you, the only way you're gonna build a lot more houses in, in some of these tight areas is to build up. You gotta have more high-rise construction. And I know people are concerned about that, but you know, density isn't necessarily all bad. Uh, and frankly, if you can build up and have more density, you're gonna have fewer traffic problems, which is also going to reduce the, the burden on people because they're not going to spend hours in traffic and means we, we can build fewer roads. It's an interesting point. There is, I think, um, no question that there's tension between local cities and counties and the state with regard to local control. And I wonder what you think the state's role is in terms of requiring cities to build and counties to build housing. Well, we need to bring different groups together, get solutions. See, that's the difference in what a businessman does, you know? I mean, I don't have the luxury of angering my lenders or, you know, instilling fear in my customers. I kind of have to bring people together to solve the problems here. Uh, I'd like to see the state, and, and as a leader, as the governor of the state, I'll try to bring people together to solve this problem. And in certain areas where, you know, we have such a huge demand, we're gonna have to have more density, and we may have to over, ride some residents' concerns. And maybe we'll do some things in other areas with mass transit to make the job a little bit easier and a little bit better and, and a little bit more welcoming to people. But let's, let's try to get a, a governor that actually works to solve these problems and bring people together. And that's, that's kind of the way I want to proceed. I'd like to just take a step back a minute and ask you to address what role you think the government has, what role you, the state has in addressing the affordability problems. C create the conditions so that builders can build, so that we can get supply, so that we can create the housing. The only way you bring down the cost of anything is more supply. And I'm sorry, that's just the law of economics. Uh, and it's the same with healthcare, it's the same with housing. You've gotta get more competition, you've gotta get more supply, you're not gonna make any significant dent with subsidies. And I gotta tell you, We've got a government that's running out of money. Uh, this state is sitting on a $1 trillion unfunded 
pension liability. And if you don't think that's a problem, look at how Illinois, my home state, is emptying out right now. California's unfunded pension debt is multiples of what Illinois is. And when this comes home to roost, you're going to see businesses leaving the state. And I got to tell you, if you think the housing market is, you know, is, is bad now, wait until people start emptying out. We don't have the money to do the major improvements we need to do. So do you think the state has any um, responsibility to commit funding, either short or long term, to this problem? Much better than funding is to create the conditions for the private sector to function and operate. That'll be multiples. I mean, again, they can subsidize a few thousand homes somewhere here, and you know that might help a few thousand people, but it's not going to help the hundreds of thousands that are living day to day spending 40, 50 percent of their income in housing. Uh, I think it'll also encourage more economic activity. I mean, if we build more homes, that's more work for roofers, for bricklayers, for carpenters, for carpet layers, for appliance sellers. I mean, it filters all throughout the economy. Uh, I'd love to have people, you know, be able to, to afford their lifestyle in this wonderful state. I mean, I love living here, uh, but I can see so many people. There was an article today that the cost of a U-Haul out of San Francisco is 10 times the cost of a U-Haul coming in to, Sac to San Francisco. Does that tell you something? U-Haul. Uh, what about the bond? There's a $4 billion housing bond going before voters this November. Where do you stand? I'm not in favor of more debt and more subsidies. I mean, that housing bond is all about handing a few subsidies out to people. I would much, much rather create the conditions for private investment, cut the time frame on approvals, cut the litigation costs, do something about the conditions that have restricted the, the supply of housing. A $4 billion housing bond is barely going to make a dent. I got to tell you, we passed a $7 billion water bond a few years ago, and they barely spent any of the money. And, you know, that's just added more debt. And by the way, because California's credit rating is so bad, we're paying a lot more interest on these bonds than we ought to be as well. Uh, that's only spiraling the cost upwards. Uh, I do not favor putting this state and our children and grandchildren into, into more debt to hand out subsidies when there are better solutions, streamlining the regulations, creating the conditions for building more density, creating the conditions for building more uh, supply of housing. So just to be clear, you're talking about getting, I mean, government getting, getting out of the way, and when you say streamlining regulations, really just cutting them. Well, yeah, and you know, listen, I've talked to so many developers, and the attitude they get from the regulators is that they work for the regulators, not the other way around. That attitude is, is endemic across the spectrum. Uh, we've got to create the conditions so that builders can build, they can get supply done. Again, I'm building apartments for 80000 a door in Indiana. Uh, the, the price of roofs, the price of brick, the price of wood isn't a lot less in Indiana than it is in California. The big drivers of cost are the insatiable demand for revenue from a lot of municipalities and counties that have made incredible promises to their city and local workers. Uh, their pensions are underfunding, uh, underfunded. Their, their, uh, their pension costs and health care costs are squeezing out everything else, so they're starving for revenue everywhere. Uh, that's part of the corruption that I've talked about. Um, and that's coming through in the housing costs. I mean, somebody pays these costs. Uh, you know, you can't just keep larding on more and more taxes and more and more costs and think that you're going to pass it off on bondholders. I mean, someday those bondholders need to get paid, and, you know, that's going to be our children and grandchildren. What we've got to do, again, is create the conditions for more supply, more building. That'll bring down the price. That'll create more demand. And you talked about people leaving California. I think uh, we're seeing an exodus from California to places like Texas and, yeah. and elsewhere. Um, <clears throat> meanwhile, many Californians, renters, are spending 
30%, 50% of their income on, on rent. Absolutely. I talk to every person I meet on the campaign trail. You know, what are you paying in rent? You know, how are you, how are you living? I meet so many people that are working two and three jobs in order to be able to pay. So how would you address the plight of renters? Again, I hate to be a broken record, but the only way to get affordable housing is more supply and more competition. So we've got to do something about CEQA, we've got to do something about the regulatory state. And I'm, I'm here to tell you, the other governor candidates will all talk about the same thing. I've heard them say it, oh, we're going to reform this, you know, we're going to reform this. They're not going to get any of that done. And you know why? Because every one of those regulations has a constituency behind it, or else it wouldn't exist. And that constituency uses their money to buy legislators, or at least to threaten legislators with campaign ads if they don't comply. I'm the only candidate that's talking about a revamp that gets the money out, that gets good, policy able to be done because we break down the barriers to actually getting and enacting uh, good policy. That has to get done in Sacramento. We can't wait. We have got a trillion dollar unfunded pension debt. We are not going to be able to satisfy that unless we grow this economy, unless we produce far more jobs and we keep businesses in this state. Businesses are leaving, Angela, because they can't afford, uh, their, their workers can't afford to live. What evidence do you have that can you point to that your approach works? And can you think of somewhere where it has? You mean the, the neighborhood legislature? No, I'm talking about the... Reducing regulation? Oh, well, I mean, look at Texas. I mean, the, the, the home, uh, home building in Texas is, is surging, uh, and it's affordable. Uh, I can point to Indiana, where I, I'm, I currently do business. Uh, there's new construction, there's manufacturing that are, that are moving into. Indiana has led the nation in manufacturing jobs over the last five years. And why? Because its legislature isn't owned by the trial lawyers, it's not owned by the funding interests. They have streamlined policy, they've reduced taxes, they've created the conditions for economic growth. And, uh, Obviously, Indiana doesn't have the weather that we do, but it's had tremendous growth. Well, I've got more questions, but I think we're out of time. We're being flashed at. So if there's anything else you want to say in closing, quickly? Well, uh, we just can't keep going the way we are. I mean, that's, that's, that's not going to work. Uh, we've got to make a change. I think people will look at the ideas that I have and talk about getting, uh, getting some real progress done in Sacramento. Great. You're making time. Thank you. And, and walk, walk up this way to the right.